Here are the records showing over $50,000 in revenue in one month from one property. Almost double the median salary of an American. And if you watch this video all the way to the end, I'll show you how this is possible without getting shut down by your local county, like my friend did. Now I want you to meet Cass. Cass is a rock star entrepreneur and single mom who runs three different businesses, one of which is her eight and a half acre land hacking property, which got shut down this past summer while making between 35 to $50,000 a month and possibly even more. I'll show you how later. Yeah, when I found out about that, I felt like I got kicked in the gonads too. But wait till you hear what she had to do to win it back. This property has it all. A farmhouse with two apartments and an Instagram influencer's dream backdrop for their booty shots. But that's not all. It has a pond that may or may not have been home to an alligator, which is no longer there. Llamas, goats, ducks, a zebra, and a wallaby. Yes, an animal so stinking cute, you don't know what to do with yourself when you see it. You think that's it though, but you'd be wrong. When I talk, showcase, and teach land hacking, it's about maximizing a property and creating multiple income streams, which enrollment for my land hacker program is live right now, and you've got just a few days left. It closes this Friday, April 1st, and if you're interested in working and learning from me and meet a bunch of like-minded entrepreneurs and investors, register for a bunch of bonuses right now. More details on the free live sessions every night this week at the end of the video and link down in the description below if you want more details about the program. But when it comes the land hacking in this property that Cass has, she took it to a whole nother level. It has tents, cabins, tree houses, and even a floating A-frame. And if that wasn't enough, it even has an entire wedding and event venue. Oh. So if you haven't guessed yet, each aspect of this incredible place generates income, especially the overnight sites and the event venue. But then, this happened. I made a video highlighting Cass's incredible vision and land hack capabilities that picked up steam on YouTube. And for my channel, it went quote unquote viral. And at the same time, several Instagram and TikTok posts went viral on those platforms too. Not a bad thing for a business, right? Especially one that caters to young millennials and Gen Z folks. Typically, no, not a problem. It's very good. Unless other people who want to copy your success goes to the county and says, I want to do this exact thing that's going on at this exact location. Please tell me how to do this. First off, that's not how things work. And you shouldn't talk to the county like that. Second, Sometimes when you're growing super fast, you don't have the time to look into every permit or the fine print of local codes and laws. And unfortunately, that's what happened here. So after someone, intentionally or not, ratted on Cass's property, the county drove out and shut her operation down overnight. That stream of cash flow dried up just like that. But we entrepreneurs are a hard breed to say no to. We like to find solutions here. Let me show you. Cass is literally located across the country from me right now, and I can't exactly fly out to see her at this moment, and I'm tired of traditional Zoom. So I had a local wizard, druid, enchant these two rings for me right here. Check these out. Pretty nice. Watch. Yeah, it works. Isn't that cool? Stick around because after this, I'll tell you how to find types of properties on your own, minus the headache that Cass had to go through. All right, so Cass, what were your first thoughts of when you first found out that your property was getting shut down and going from $50,000 plus a month down to zero overnight? I was in shock, really. Um, I really didn't expect it. Just thought, okay, I, I have to face this and figure it out somehow. All right, now what are your most profitable months? So the property, is we specialize in weddings and camping. So in Florida, the weather is the best in the spring and the fall. So I would say like March, usually like February, March, and then in the fall, it would be like September, October, November would be like our strong months for weddings and camping. So Cass, what makes this business so profitable compared to other short-term rentals? Just the fact that we're so visually stunning. The guests really love that. And we're close to major cities and the guests could get out of the cities, come to a farm, pet an animal. And what was the exact reason for why they decided to come and shut you down? Someone had called them and Actually, they called and they said, hey, I want to open a property just like this one. And they told them about me and they went on my website 
And the county was like, what? Like, what is this place? I guess they'd just never seen anything like my property. So they came and shut me down over it. So really they flagged me because they thought that I could not run a commercial business from a farm. So from a very high level, what did you have to do to reopen or get your place ready to go? Meetings with my lawyer and then the county um, wanted me to have a special use permit. The county gave me a list of things that they needed from me to um, be able to pass a special use permit. But they thought that they knew the Florida Ag Law and my attorney had to inform them that they did not even know their own law that Florida State protects farmers like me who own properties that are wedding venues. Ultimately, I got my special use permit for a campground. Hey, thanks so much, Cass. I'll sling Porter you later. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Kai. Thank you. See you soon. All right. Pretty sweet, huh? We all need that wizard druid friend, even though it does kind of make me kind of look a little bit feminine with these pinky rings. Now, it's nice to own one property that makes the equivalent of a heart surgeon's annual salary without going through 12 years of medical school and crippling student debt. Now, you'd think most of these types of properties are taken up and no longer available, but again, you'd be wrong. You just have to be a little bit creative on how you find and what you're willing to buy. There are two ways on how you find these types of properties. Now, I've done both and prefer the second method. Here, let's use these enchanted rings again and jump back in a time to a property that I almost put under contract. Okay, that was really cool. Okay, so I looked at this property a couple months ago. Due to the NDA that I signed, I can't reveal its exact location or name, and I have to blur out some of the recognizable features. But the first method is to find an existing operational property by teaming up with a residential and commercial real estate agent. Sometimes the zoning and permitting falls between the two designations, so it depends on what type of agent you wanna work with or that can find these type of properties. I usually do one of each. Now, such as the property with Cass, where she does have a residential home on it, but it's also a commercial business, just like this place, where this place is actually an unrestricted piece of property, and it has a house, tiny home, and a massive event center. Here, let me take you over there so you can actually see it with a better perspective. Ooh, that was tingly. Now, I know it doesn't look that big from this angle, but that is a massive hall that can safely house close to a thousand people. I believe there are nine or 10 bathrooms in that one building alone. So these agents are able to bring deals like this to the table or to your attention. That's the easy way, but you end up paying a premium because these are already listed as income generators. Not always a bad thing, but definitely you'll be paying a higher price. Uh oh, my time is up here, alarm's going. Gotta head back to the studio so I don't wanna get stuck here. Now, I think I like that way better than the app that I used in the last video. But the other way, the second method, is to do some searching on your own. There are three components to properties like this or similar to this. It's zoning and permits, location aesthetics, and topography and size. All three, which can be answered online. Here, let's teleport and go back in time again to another piece of property that I took a look at a while back. Whew, nice. I like how I don't just fall out of the sky with this teleporting method. I definitely wanna keep these rings. Okay, zoning and permits is critical to any area. And this can be done by simply finding the counties you want to search in and then pulling up their zoning map and zoning ordinance or their code book. Once you learn how to read these, it'll tell you exactly what you can and cannot do. Speaking of which, I teach you how to read these in my Land Hacker program. Next is the location aesthetics. You're obviously looking for an inviting and beautiful area that can attract guests and customers. You can do this by actually walking the property know the area, look at satellite images, or even Google Street Views. In this case, we decided to walk this incredible property ourselves. And then the last is topography and size. If you're doing a land hack where you want to farm, grow timber, raise bees, or build a glam site, the property cannot be built on the side of a mountain or be in a flood zone. It also has to be large enough. You want to know how the land actually looks. Clearly, you're not hosting rentals and weddings and events on a half acre lot with neighbors right next door. Whoops. There's the alarm. Gotta head back to the studio. Don't wanna get trapped here. Yeah, I like this power. 
But keeping those three criteria in mind, you can just search for beautiful sprawling properties on Zillow or even LoopNet by filtering for single family and multifamily homes and acreage size. I like at least 10 acres or more. Now my goal here is to find a larger lot that's in a rural or farming type of community that meets all the criteria I laid out earlier, but not currently operating as a land hack or income generator. That way I don't have to pay the premium for the business itself. And I can build or you can build the equity and cash flows on your own. Ideally the property has an appraisable dwelling structure so you can take advantage of a traditional loan. But even when you find the picture perfect property, you'll have to consider the permits that you need so you can avoid what CAS went through. This also plays into zoning. Sometimes it's not as straightforward as you'd like. So you have to do something that I call zoning and permit stacking, where you acquire an easier zoning type that allows you to stack the appropriate permits. There's a lot more details and nuances to this that I talk in way more depth in my Land Hacker program that literally is open for enrollment right now at the time that this video is published. It is closing and I believe in two days, maybe three days. Enrollment does close this Friday, April 1st at midnight. And everyone who registers now not only gets a crazy discount, but also gets free enrollment into the Six Figure Host Program and gets to attend the live classroom sessions with me every week. If you're still on the fence about it, don't worry, there's a money back guarantee and I'm hosting mini webinars all this week with live Q&A sessions so you can jump in and see what the program's all about. If you wanna learn more, go over to kaiandrew.com, join the email list and you'll get an invite before I go live. I hope I see you in class. I'll see you guys next time. See you later. That's for you to teleport me out. Okay. And then lastly, what would you tell other entrepreneurs who want to do something similar, but don't want to go through the headache that you had to go through? I would tell, tell everyone to go for it. Like, honestly, I just had such a huge idea and I wouldn't let anyone tell me that I couldn't do it. <laughs> People would try to tell me, oh, that's not a good idea. And I was like, I don't care. I'm still going to try it. And I just think that if I didn't try this, like if I didn't have the courage to try this project, like I, I would not have ever known. So my biggest thing is I always tell people, you just have to go for it. And if it doesn't work out, then you've learned. Like I've had a lot of failed projects, you know, and, but I'm, I'm really glad that I tried all of those projects because I learned something from each one.